What's up, PUTube? What happens when you let a football manager simulation run wild with the Copa America tournament a hundred times? Let's just say the results are as unpredictable as Jossi Zardes in front of goal. Boy, this time Ariola, that was moving! It's in anyway! Jossi Zardes! Right place, right time! So here we are. The 10 combable and 6 CONCACAF squads are set, and I went into Football Manager to simulate 100 Copa America tournaments to find out who is most likely to lift the trophy, and honestly, the results will absolutely shock you. The tournament is set up in such a way that one side of the knockout bracket is Group A versus Group B, and the other side is Group C versus Group D. Group A has Argentina, Canada, Peru, and Chile. Group B is Mexico, Venezuela, Ecuador, and Jamaica. Group C is host United States, Uruguay, Panama, and Bolivia. And Group D is Brazil, Colombia, Paraguay, and Costa Rica. Now it seems to me that there is a clear favorite in Argentina to reach the final from the A and B side, but the C and D side is a bit more complicated with the hosts, and then Brazil, Uruguay, and Colombia all bringing dangerous squads to the tournament. Now keep in mind as well that each of these simulations took about an hour each, and then I added all of the data into a spreadsheet tracker, and by the end of this video, it is easily over 200 hours of work to bring you this. I am really proud of it, so I hope you all enjoy it. Let's start with the obvious first choice you all want to know, who were the best and worst teams in the group stages? Here are the five teams that averaged the least amount of points in the group stage. The fifth worst team was Peru, averaging just one win per group stage and 3.1 points. Unfortunately for Peruvians, they only qualified for the knockout 6% of the time. For Group A, it's really difficult because actually the sixth and seventh worst teams in the group stage were Canada and Chile, so Peru was close to their group mates but the worst of the bunch. Fourth worst is Group D's Paraguay, with an average of only 2.9 points per group stage, but they do make the knockout 7% of the time. Next up is the first time we see a CONCACAF team, it's Jamaica in Group B, averaging less than a win per group stage and only 2.7 points. However, they do make the knockouts more often than Paraguay and Peru, mostly because of how Group B is made up. Second worst is the lowest ranked combable team and Group C's Bolivia. Bolivia have quite an uphill battle if they want to do damage in this tournament. 0.7 wins per group stage and only 2.3 points. They qualified for the knockouts 5% of the time. But by far, by far the worst team in Copa America was Costa Rica who averaged 2 points per tournament and qualified for a whopping 0 of knockout rounds. You had 100 chances Costa Rica and you didn't qualify in any of them. Oof. Okay, on to the best teams. In fifth place is a surprise to me, but it is Group B's Ecuador, averaging 1.7 wins per group stage and 5.3 points. They have an 89% chance to qualify for the knockouts. In fourth place we have Colombia. Colombia is actually the first squad in this list that breached the 2 wins per group stage threshold and averaged 6.2 points. They also qualified for the knockouts 95% of the time. The next teams are actually a tie for second place with Brazil and Uruguay both averaging 2.2 wins and 0.2 draws per group stage for a massive 6.8 points per tournament. However, because of the makeup of their groups, Brazil edged out Uruguay, qualifying past the group 98% of the time, while Uruguay lagged at 93%. The best performing team in the group stage by far is Lionel Messi's Argentina, averaging 2.6 wins and 7.9 points. Argentina only missed the knockouts in two of the 100 simulations. Now the good stuff. Which countries lift the Copa America trophy? Let's recognize all the teams who won at least once, and to my surprise, over half of the 16 teams across the 100 simulations won this tournament. That is absolutely wild to me, and shows, I think, how competitive this summer is going to be. Soccer fans are going to be eaten with Copa, Euros, and Olympics all at the same time. Paraguay and Chile each played spoilers just once by lifting the Copa America trophy, while Mexico won in four of the tournaments. We make a sizable jump up to the host USA and Ecuador, suck at Mexico, who raised the trophy nine times each. Colombia and Uruguay each won the final 10 times, and the last two teams are who you expect, which Brazil winning 27 editions and Argentina taking home 29. The most surprising thing to me is how many the US won. And I think while the engine generally underestimates the US talent pool, I think the home field advantage is playing a huge part in these simulations, especially in the one-off knockout rounds. The group with the most combined finals and the only group with three winners was Group D with Brazil, Colombia, and Paraguay. 
Is group D the real group of death here? It seems to me that group C and D have a far more difficult side of the knockout bracket and therefore a more difficult road to the final. Argentina's dominance in the group stage didn't really slow down throughout. Out of the 98 quarterfinals, they won 83 of them and eventually went on to win the trophy 29% of the time. If I'm a US fan, which I am, then I'm feeling pretty good about FM giving us a 9% chance to win the whole dang thing with so many incredible teams participating, except Mexico, they really suck. In the simulations, Vinicius Jr. was the golden boot winner in 41% of the tournaments. But again, I think good news for US fans that in 6% of the simulations, Fuller and Balogun led the Copa America scoring charts. Last but not least, I wanna give a huge shout out to Canada who made the final six different times and won zero of them. Let's all point and laugh at America's hat. One last thing I wanted to do was compare the simulation to the current betting odds and the implied odds of winning to see if there were any over and under performers. Ecuador, the United States, and Colombia are the dark horses with win rates in the simulation that far exceeded the betting odds expectation. On the flip side, even though powerhouses like Argentina and Brazil showed really strong, they didn't quite live up to the high hopes set by their current odds. Uruguay also seemed to stumble a bit more than expected. So are the bookmakers missing a trick here or is football manager onto something that the odds haven't caught up yet? Okay, that's it. What did you think? Do you agree with the football manager engine or the bookies? Don't forget to like, comment, and smash that subscribe button for more soccer simulations and unexpected outcomes. What team surprised you most in these simulations? Let me know down below in the comments. I hope everyone really enjoyed this video and I have to thank Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this video. SNHU is an accredited nonprofit and affordable university. And if you like me are in your career crisis era or thinking about your next steps in college, all I ask is that you seriously consider SNHU sports management degree as an option. I almost never carry a presenting partner, but I believe in SNHU's mission and they have been kind enough to support this channel. If you have even the slightest interest in this, I encourage you to go to snhu.edu slash it's called soccer. Also linked in my description and pinned comment to see if you qualify for SNHU sports management program. Click the link to get started and just signing up for more information goes a long way in supporting this channel. It's completely free for you to sign up for more information and each sign up adds more funding for this channel to make more videos just like this. Thanks so much everyone. Thanks to SNHU for sponsoring this and I'll see you next time. Peace.